Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello and welcome to this Friday with Anne. Good morning, Anne. Good morning, Joost. Um, this is a historical moment in the history of homeopathy. <laughs> really? <laughs> We're doing our 20th Friday with Anne. Oh, I 20 weeks have passed. Um, and I wanted to embark on a, a philosophical journey with you today. Mm -hmm. um, in many episodes now, in many sessions, we have spoken about uh, the scientific aspect of homeopathy. But there is also an art aspect to homeopathy, which um, various homeopaths have referred to. But it's not so clear what what is what and what is the artistic part exactly. So I would like to speak with you about this, or I would like you to speak <laughs> about this. Um, so can you, um, as a start, can you please explain these two? What is it? Why, why do we differentiate between art and science? Uh -huh. It's a, a very interesting, interesting topic, but as you said, difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. We all say, we all agree, homeopathy is art and science, and then we continue talking about the scientific part of it. Mm -hmm. Because that's the easiest. It's about method, it's about the, the how does it work, and it's the proof, and uh, there is no proof yet, and the scientific research, and all of the quarrels and the disputes and, and the books, of most of the books, are on this scientific part. Mm -hmm. And the art part is either not spoken of or forgotten uh, 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 at all. I don't know. And for me, it's the most important part. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is a, that makes it all the more interesting. Yes. So we can say the science is, that the science part is the method, the methodology, how we, how we take a case and which approach we take to analyzing the case and all material medical knowledge as well, or what would you say is all the, what, what's the science part? What you said to start with, it's like I compare it to arts. In, in, in general, you have to start with your learning your instrument and you have to um, practice, drill, do it every day in order to have it in your fingers. And it's the same with homeopathy. It's, it seems boring, <laughs> especially to the outsiders, homeopaths and even homeopathic students usually think it's very interesting to study all these uh, rubrics and, you know, all these remedy pictures and to repertorize and it's learning how to master your instrument and it's necessary it's a technique and without technique you can't play yes uh -huh. and with some simple technique actually you can do a lot it's like playing the guitar once you know a few chords you can sing a song and you can already do something that other people can't so it's the mm -hmm. same like with homeopathic basic uh technique you can do a lot you can make clinical prescriptions and they're great because they do better than most of you know uh, regular medicines they mm -hmm. can cure diseases that can't be cured you can cure epidemics you, you you can go to third world countries i told you before the first or second year student can make wonderful clinical prescriptions with like basic techniques yeah. Isn't that amazing? You know, <laughs> but okay. yeah. yeah, but the art part comes later. It's like something added to it. Like if you go to art school and you learn the technique, 
once you know how to, to, to draw a landscape or, or paint a, a face of somebody, a portrait, people are amazed because mm. oh, it, it looks so similar, you know, <laughs> it's so well done. But for the real artist, this is mainly technique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not art yet. <laughs> uh -huh. So it sounds like what I'd say commonly we're being taught and what we commonly apply when we or think of and, and tell others about homeopathy is science, is the scientific part then. Because I mean, that's what we learn at school. We learn the, the rubrics, we learn remedy pictures, we learn how to take a case, which steps we can go through in case taking which questions to ask how to ask the questions then we learn how to analyze the case what to include in the repertorization and the material medica comparison and to choose the pathology even though that's also where more interpretation comes in i guess but um this is the majority of our training isn't it? Yes, indeed. And it has to. <laughs> you have to start mm -hmm. somewhere and you have to start with the technique. Yeah. yeah. So that has has to be the basic training of everybody, but it shouldn't stop there. But the technique is the easiest because mm -hmm. it has some, uh, how to say, um, certainty like in the books the same books are used and the same rubrics and we use the same instruments so we have some kind of shared um an understanding which yeah. is much more difficult with the artistic part because then the individuality plays a bigger role you know with crystal we wrote articles and and as we were both directors of a school we had a lot of discussions about the ideal way of training students and of course the technical part is not that difficult because you can make like rules and regulations and programs and all that but the rest is more implicit and we compared it or i compared it to uh to our school where the the, the teachers actually walking around in the classroom as the students are making their drawings uh, let's say the draw model and and he stops at every student's drawing and comments on the student's work uh, according to his understanding to his level to his uh, inner world so the, the the teacher has to be like a, almost a personal coach we would call it a coach nowadays uh -huh. as to help the student um to give the best of him, to see where he is, to point out his weak spots or his his uh, um, where he goes wrong or where he, mm -hmm. you know, is using an easy trick instead of challenging himself and all that. So mm -hmm. the, he he personally coaches him, and that is that would be ideal in homeopathic training if the student could have like a clinical training with all his technical knowledge and then he has like a personal supervisor who can comment on the way he takes a case because that is where the art comes in the way he analyzes and understands the case it, but it's individual and of course nobody has the money to do this so we are only talking of, of a future ideal mm, yes yeah um okay now we're um well would you like to elaborate a bit more than on this this art aspect i mean it, you already said that it's like a there is an experienced person an experienced homeopath who can give you directions who give you can give you guidance seeing how you apply your technique in real life scenarios. Yeah. Um, so what is the art about? <laughs> yes, it? yeah, you can't avoid the question. I know it was coming. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> yes, it is the only good question to ask. I agree, <laughs> but you know, we were like turning around a little bit. 
what yeah. is the artistic i have to nail you down yes you have to i know i knew, i knew it was coming so but this the artistic part is so difficult i can try to convey it but you know in the book homeopathy strange and peculiar uh, there's mm -hmm. a chapter on the healing setting and it, mm -hmm. it, it was represented by a triangle where the one point represents the homeopathy, the other point the uh, patient and the other point the remedy and there were conditions for the three points in order to have like a real healing a possibility to occur now mm -hmm. at the at the point where the homeopath is the conditions as far as i remember were having the intention to heal of course yeah. and having the knowledge to do it yeah mm -hmm. but there's maybe one more thing or maybe a few more requirements and uh -huh. what makes a homeopath an artist or an artistic homeopath and i think like personal development or personal let's say maturity helps yeah, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> what Hahnemann basically calls common sense and knowledge of human nature because you cannot know human nature if you don't know yourself and the consequence of that is I think if you get to know yourself better and mm -hmm. you are more able to look at a person and prejudice that you start to love all your patients I know how this sounds <laughs> <laughs> like you welcome them with a kind of uh, acceptance and love like you you're good as you are mm -hmm. yeah come as you are come. yeah of course we're not speaking about you want to engage in a re romantic relationship with all the patients no no <laughs> accept them the way yeah. they are in, where, in which part they are of their process yes. and also accepting which part you are in your yes. life mm -hmm. not um, yeah, not expecting also anything or too much of yourself or of the patient and yes, yes. i see uh -huh. yes and the willingness to hold the space for them that like all the spaces for them and you you will um whatever they suffer from you know you are curious to know you're interested you have a like mm -hmm. a, a genuine uh honest attention it's not concentration it's not working hard it's having the full attention mm. and which is in itself uh, um, inviting for the patient yes. and i also would recommend or the homeopath to act normal you know <laughs> to just have a, like a normal talk or a seemingly normal talk not asking fancy questions we we said that before like try to understand your patient with a natural curiosity of mm -hmm. course with a purpose to help not because you're curious for some other reason eh? and if you are you can say now for my personal interest can you elaborate on this or that even why not yeah? yeah and this setting i think would help to because it's the patient doing it basically it's not us we are creating the the scene, the possibilities, but the patient is then uh, able to open himself, to show himself. And we know, we convinced that there cannot be anything else than perfection. Because that's, you know, that's the law of the universe. So when the patient does this and he shows himself in all his aspects and thoughts and feelings and expressions, you know when all the dots connect that's what we say you see the yeah, yeah. pattern then we see the perfection and that is what i would call the art of homeopathy where the coherent pattern like shows itself like emerges before your eyes it's like a transcendence of mm -hmm. of a talk over or or asking questions and answering it's like this is me this is a person this is the universe you know this is a star like you can see for your eyes and this is beauty because it's you see the truth you see the beauty you see the coherence you see the perfection you know that's when your heart starts to sing yeah mm -hmm. yes that is um i see that that as another 
level of the of the healing environment yeah mm -hmm. a non-judgmental fully accepting uh, love of the patient and um, yeah this like you say this this space where he can just they can just be the way they are mm -hmm. and you're just receiving that receiving understanding you know you, you from this the distance disappears it's like mm -hmm. oh that's how it's to be you yeah there's a connection so all these words you know it's it's trying to convey actually when i explained this i told you with the newest book which is in dutch uh, that i present uh, in public i try to explain that the book um, shows more or emphasizes more the artistic part than the scientific part it's not a book with discussions like we are right and they are wrong and all that it's more like what do we do as homeopaths what is our life what is our passion why are we fascinated day and night for decades doing this thing so i try to explain a little bit why that is because of the art because like every artist you you whether you're forbidden or 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 not whether you're successful of, or not you cannot stop being an artist mm -hmm. if, if yeah. they say your art is forbidden then you will have to hide in your in your cellar but you will continue to to make your art so it's the same with homeopaths and i try to explain them why and then i see when the homeopaths in the public they all start nodding <laughs> they all know where I'm what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, other people they look at me like, huh? What is this homeopathy? But all the homeopaths they are they're happy that they, they know what I'm talking about. It's just yeah. difficult to to discuss with other people. Non homeopaths, it's virtually impossible. You know, it's like mm -hmm. uh, I, I compare it to you know, father and child go to a exposition and there's a mondrian this abstract art mm -hmm. and the father doesn't understand anything of it and he says my son can make the same drawings hmm? yeah. yeah and there's no way to explain this person the difference between his son's drawings and the drawings in the museum <laughs> because if he doesn't see the difference that means he's not educated to see the difference mm -hmm. he doesn't have a concept to see the difference he doesn't know what abstract means yeah so, mm -hmm. yeah so there's no way you can it to him for him it's it's the same thing yeah it's it's a flat representation of you know lines and colors and doesn't talk to him it doesn't say anything to him mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so i see though i see several aspects now that you're talking about mm -hmm. On the one hand, it is the the healing scenario, mm -hmm. the healing yeah constellation. Then there is a passion <laughs> that you or that one as the homeopath has mm -hmm. for their profession. Mm -hmm. um, and this deeper understanding that you now spoke of, which is seeing the beauty of of the craft, so to say, of their craft, mm -hmm. of maybe a beautiful case, ca case taking, how things all fall into place and you come to a good prescription, which then also works. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And the patient is better and everything is becoming more harmonious, more balanced. Mm. These are two aspects, right? And I see also another aspect which I would like to now uh, ask you about because um, and I want I wonder if this is a part of the art as well or how were you where we, where would you put it because we all learn the method but it's not it's not really one method and even if we learn a similar method then we will almost always end up or not always but for at least in the beginning and um, when you go to seminars you also notice this 
you will end up at a, at a stage where with your method, you end up at a, a selection of remedies that you don't know. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you know somehow, or maybe you think you know, but it's then a little bit of an interpretation where you would, you could come to a different conclusion than others. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, is this because our method is not refined enough? Or is this actually an artistic aspect of the treatment of the therapy? Do you know what I mean? Mm, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you go to a seminar and you see a case, and uh, you see the case and everybody takes notes, everybody thinks of things, and then at the end you're asked, so what is a remedy? You get 20 remedies. Yes. Mm -hmm. Supposedly, we all have the same method. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, but mm -hmm. is this now a lack of method, mm -hmm. methodology, or is this is, uh, is this an artistic thing that you have to develop some of a feeling for which is the right remedy for lack of better method? Or mm -hmm. yeah. Reason? Well, I think we went through that more or less. You can uh, first try to define for yourself on what level you are prescribing. And I, we, talk, we talked about this before. There's uh, legitimate, legitimate reasons to prescribe on two or three or four or five for this particular patient. So it's not always we aim at level five and every prescription should do that and, and only, only those prescriptions will be curative. Still, I think, and I think we agree on that, and that's my point of view, there's like one signature remedy, like one remedy that is the closest resonance. And it's still approximate, because it can be anything else. Otherwise, you will never prescribe twice the same remedy in your life, for instance. So it's always near, uh, near enough to yeah, yeah. resonate at the core. Yeah. And so there's the one and the many, as uh, we talked about in other talks. You have the like the one signature, and then the many remedies that that can do good. And depending on the level of the analysis or the homeopath, they will maybe come up with one of those remedies that will do good, but that not, are not necessarily the vital remedy. So it is not by definition a matter of art. It can be okay. a matter of, let's say, method. If if the remedy happens to fall within groups that are well known <laughs> among homeopaths, the patient is lucky. <laughs> because method probably will then all point to the same remedy because it's well known. It's yeah. it's a lesser known remedy. Probably a lot of homeopaths will come up with lots of different suggestions because the yeah. remedy is partially known or unknown, and they will come up with one of those many remedies that will do good, and maybe not with the similar one. But oh, this is the best we can do, so, okay. and we're evolving. Yes, so I hear that it's, it sounds like it's still a matter of, of method and not really an artistic aspect. Um, okay, so, So, trying to come back then to the to the artistic aspect. Yes. Was the you were describing the yeah this beauty aspect, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you recall that you read or talk about beautiful cases? Yeah. yeah isn't that isn't that strange? I mean, I don't know how many doctors or, or you know health workers talk about a beautiful case now homeopaths do all of the time i have a beautiful case you know and we like to read beautiful cases cases and to uh, talk about beautiful cases and what is the beauty in it yeah maybe this is also because in general um a lot of the emotion is taken out of conventional medicine it's not really an emotional subject you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we never try to define it. We know when it's a beautiful case and we love it, you know, we're thrilled by it, but what is a beautiful case? And if, if you will it have, yeah, put words on it. You can try to put I words on it. For example, when you have an idea 
at some stage of the case what the remedy might be and um, and it's not it's probably not one of the very obvious ones or maybe it is but m much rather it's not one of the, the the obvious ones and you ask a confirmatory question and the patient immediately says yes yes <laughs> that's exactly that's mm -hmm. exactly right mm -hmm. that's i would say can be a, a, the experience of a beautiful prescription and then later when you when the patient comes for a follow-up and of course that's great when they say yeah i'm and I'm, I'm, this was has been a deep-seated pattern for me and now i feel more relaxed about it mm -hmm. yeah yeah i would say that that's a, a beautiful an aspect of a beautiful thing. yes that's of course what we are always trying to to do it's to bring about healing eh? on deep seated things actually it's it's a transformation it's underestimated i think by patients and homeopaths alike what a homeopathic similar prescription can do if you stick to it long enough yeah. uh, but the beauty of as you say like this confirmatory symptom it's like it fits you know everything yeah. fits it's yeah. the, the puzzle is complete. I, yeah. I see it now. It's like a moment you you see you had an idea and now it's confirmed. And yeah. the, the patient uh, adds to it the missing pieces and now it's complete. So in its completeness, why is it so beautiful? Why is it so exciting to have this 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 coherent picture? I I keep repeating the same words because there's in beauty there's truth you know this is it mm. you understand something you you saw something you know something something happens that transcends yourself it's like i compare it to music as well you play music you play every day you have uh, uh, performances and every now and then something will happen that transcends your let's say regular performances you make good performances maybe every week but maybe only a few times in your life the performance will be perfect mm -hmm. something yeah. will carry you away your group away your there's something more happening than all of the band uh, people are playing in tune or playing well there's something more happening mm -hmm. and this something more it's almost like a divine thing we don't know what it is but we are we know when it happens and we try to set the stage for it yeah by uh, by doing our art mm -hmm. on a daily basis you see patients on a daily basis or a weekly basis it doesn't matter you see patients regularly and only now and then you know it happens you know <laughs> and what yeah. happens your beautiful case that is yeah. what happens <laughs> did you do something else probably not were you different probably not it's like a moment of grace mm. Uh, mm -hmm. and that keeps you going yeah. i think that keeps all homeopaths going <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I find this very stimulating, this <laughs> topic, and there are more thoughts coming to me about it, which we should discuss in a further episode. I will do more thinking on this. Yeah. And we can discuss it again. Yeah. With a different, with a different um, perspective. Okay. It's only words, but you know, it's an experience. You have to let yeah. think it in and actually yeah, yeah. We, we know it. It's implicit, I think, in all homeopaths working with, you know, with constitutional prescriptions. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So we tried today to <laughs> approach the topic of art, science and homeopathy, especially the art of homeopathy mm -hmm. and clarified what we understand under the science of homeopathy and began to define a bit about the art of it mm -hmm. and the beauty of it and um, 
it relates also to the healing scenario. So mm, I would call this the first season of our Fridays, Adana. Mm -hmm. Comes to a close with 20 episodes. And um, we go on a summer break now and we will be back after the summer. Thank you very much for this exciting <laughs> and uh, enlightening, informing talks. And I look forward to seeing you on Friday after the summer. Okay. Okay. We'll have a little, little summer break. I think we deserved it. <laughs> okay. Have a good summer, Joost. You too. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye.